Hello and welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for checking in. If you're listening on the podcast, thanks for listening. Today we are going to learn all about how to build a soundproof baffle box. So if you've been wondering how to make it so that you can get fresh air in and out of your studio while not hearing anything, then this is the video for you. Before we jump in, I want to say that I have a free soundproofing workshop that is available below in the notes here in the description. If you want to take a deeper dive into how to build your soundproof studio, I'm going to teach you all of that in this workshop. So definitely check it out. 45 minute awesome workshop. It's going to be amazing. I hope to see you in there. All right. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So first, I just want to say, what is a baffle box? That's a fair question. So basically, when you are sending air into your studio, whether this is for ventilation purposes or heating and cooling or both, you need some way for that air to come into the studio and have it so you don't hear the air actually flowing in. In your home, the velocity, the speed of the air can be so fast that you actually hear that air flowing through the vent. I think many of us can relate to that being in homes where we've heard the HVAC system kick on and then all of a sudden you start hearing the airflow. In a recording studio, that is not ideal. Also, we want to make sure that when we send air and put a big hole in our wall to get fresh air in, that that hole is still soundproof. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build that baffle box, which I think is a great solution for this in terms of both creating a larger area for this, the air to come through so that it's quieter and then also keeping out all the excess noise that we've worked so hard to keep out in our studio from building soundproof walls, windows, doors, floors, ceilings, all that good stuff. So that is what a baffle box is. Now let's go into a little bit of information on understanding a little bit of the science of airflow. And I'm not going to go super in depth with math or equations or anything like that. I'm going to try to keep this really simple for you so you can understand this. So the first thing we want to understand is that in a typical room, humans need about 15 cubic feet per minute of air exchange for us to comfortably have fresh air in the room. So it's pretty simple math just to multiply the number of people that you'll be having in your studio room. And that is the amount of cubic feet per minute that you need. So think of that as the volume of air that is getting transferred into the room or transferred out of the room over time. The other thing we need to think about is the speed of that airflow. So the in terms of physics, we talk about velocity, the speed of the air traveling through your ventilation system and then coming into your studio. In general, with recording studios, we want two things. We want to have low velocity or low speed of air, and we want to have high or large volumes of air. So large volumes of our ducting system, essentially, to keep that air coming in at the right amount of volume of air so that we can feel like we're getting enough fresh air and heating and cooling, but also so it's so big that we don't hear the air actually passing through the ventilation system. So those concepts are important to understand as I jump into the design of the baffle box. So let's take a look at that baffle box design. I want to say that I actually hired Roger Weiss, who is the author of the book that I highly recommend everyone read if you're interested in building a soundproof studio, which is Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros. And again, that's by Rod Gervais. I used to call him Gervais, but I was told I was pronouncing it incorrectly. So now Gervais. But anyway, so let's jump into the actual plan that Rod made me. And I'll kind of talk about this. You're welcome to take this plan, copy it, modify it how you want. Um, but this general plan will help you create a baffle box for your studio. And then after that, we're going to actually uh, go over how we built the baffle box and installed it in the studio. All right. So let's jump into the plans first. All right, everybody. So now we're going to take a slightly different approach. I want to show you the actual plans that Rod gave me. Um, for someone who doesn't, isn't an engineer, someone who never really studied this, I did a little architecture in college, but it was like two semesters or something like that. So this was a little bit funky to read. So I'm just going to show you uh, to start with, you know, this top box up here. Let's take a closer look at it. So 
if you can see here, we have um, six feet, six and seven eighths inches long, and then two feet, two and a half inches wide. The depth of this bad boy is one foot, one and a half inches um, across. So the idea is fairly simple. You're creating these baffles. The air is coming in through a six inch saddle tap on flat with end crimp to accept flex duct. Um, nothing too crazy there. Just get something that can get six inches in there, attach it with screws. Uh, we're using three quarter inch plywood the whole way around three quarter inch plywood baffle. Um, so that's what these guys are. That's what all this box is. And then this cross hatching here is uh, John Manville Permacoat Lin Acoustics R300 duct liner, typical of all interior surfaces. So that stuff was pretty hard to find. I actually had to call around a bit and special order it through a, um, a warehouse here in Nashville that services um, special acoustic treatment for HVAC stuff. The, the, it's a little expensive too. I think I spent about 500 bucks on all the insulation, but I actually got a little too much. So... Um, I think I got five panels and they're like eight foot by four foot panels. So maybe you get four of those and you'll be okay. Um, so one and a half inches is the width of that too. So that's, that's what you're going to put all the way around this whole, um, surface here. So, and actually I'm noticing in this design here that he has these cut at a 45 degree angle, which is a good way to do it. We didn't do that, but that'll make it so that you never have any insulation showing. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the build section of this. So we have this one foot and a quarter inch air gap that is essentially going to be, um, going the entire way, one foot and a quarter inch now all the way to the, um, plywood there. So noticing these designs, um, this is how you're going to build your baffle box. And this will give you, you know, adequate air for a space. Um, my studio is 270 square feet as a room. So anything um, around that range, you know, this system could work well. If you have slightly larger space or multiple rooms or things like that, you might even want to reach out to Rod or I will make a video in the future that kind of goes into more of the math and science behind sizing these vents and getting the right airflow and things like that. That was one of the reasons I wanted to hire Rod is I just wanted to be reassured that the airflow was going to be slow enough that I wouldn't hear it. And also that I was getting enough um, air to begin with to circulate through the room. So that was some more math and engineering than I really wanted to dial in on my own. So here's a side view of it. It's a little complicated, um, but this gives you some of the same dimensions there. Now I want to take a quick look over here. So here's the system notes here. So provide four, four inch, uh, sorry. Yeah. Four inch round MTL duct to the point of the party wall. The party wall is the wall between your mechanical room and your actual studio. So, and then it will transition to that 12 foot by 12 foot, um, duct going into the actual studio, which is what we did. And I'll explain a little bit more about what that looks like in a second. You want to buy these Nailer Industries 12 foot by 12 foot model 71 DH supply grill with a model 7145H return air grill mounted in the room. That's what those grills look like that I showed you earlier. And uh, they're really easy to mount. Again, special order these, give yourself enough time um, to get them. Everything with this is so specialized that a lot of providers won't have them on hand. You got to call around for a supplier that that sells the nailer industries and sells the Lin acoustics permacoat product. Um, the Fantech model S E 704 N is the ERV unit. Um, get it with all the required accessories. Uh, it just comes in a box. It's actually not too expensive. I think it was around, uh, I want to say five, $600 and shipped really quickly. So they, they were great to work with. And then duct unit through sidewalls for fresh air and exhaust using the Fantech C O M four P supply and exhaust hoods. So you can look those up on the Fantech website. And again, those came very quickly. Um, those are your supply and exhaust hoods, which, uh, I showed you previously in the overview on the outside of my building. And you want to make sure those are at least, I think it's three to six feet away from each other. It might, it might even be six feet. If you look at the, um, diagram that they send you with the, with the product. So this is all the, the technical stuff you'll need, and then you'll need to buy some more 
you can get a lot of the plywood and the the um, actual duct work and these these six inch saddles and things like that. You can get all that at um, Home Depot, Lowe's, or your any big box store wherever you are in the world. So this is the more specialized stuff. All right, so I just wanted to go over this plan with you so you could kind of see it more in depth. And um, I hope you enjoyed looking at this. Now let's take a look at the actual building of it and how it all came together in my studio. All right, so now that we've talked about the overview of what I've done and gone over the design, I just wanna show you a little bit more of the details of what we actually did with the build process. Cause it was kind of funky, like anything you build, I feel like there's always this sort of art and improvisation that happens. At least that's the way it's been with us. Um, and on this design of the boxes, that's kind of what happened. So from the original design, we built it exactly like Rod had done, but to fit it in, to the space we had in that extra shed area there, we had to really kind of tweak his plans a little bit. So one of the things that we did is we actually extended the box that has the um, ventilation air that's leaving the studio. We kind of made it go up and over the other box just so it fit in the, um, the shed area that I had there. So like I said, you can customize this however you want for your own studio. Um, just keeping the general idea of keeping those dimensions the same is really important so that you have that big space for air to flow through and slow down and also quiet it down with the, um, the insulation that's inside the box. So the boxes themselves, you saw in the design how to build it. We basically just used that three quarter inch plywood, followed those designs, making sure there's always a, a one foot and a quarter inch air gap between all of the pathways that are going through the baffles there. Uh, and it's somewhat self-explanatory. Then what's kind of weird is when you're attaching the um, insulation, we, Rod had told me to use these things called stick pins, which are, I think, something that's used with insulation companies for attaching this material. We ended up, Henry, my contractor, ended up kind of using them, I think, in the non-traditional way, which is totally fine. Um, I'll have notes uh, in the comments here on what those stick pins are and where you can get them. But to be honest, we didn't really use them correctly. So I think, honestly, using a screw and a washer, uh, Henry did this in some cases here too, it would hold that insulation in place as well. And if you had some sort of adhesive, like some sort of industrial glue, you could also glue that to the back of the insulation to hold it against the box. So like I said, you can improvise a little bit here. There's no right or wrong way necessarily just to make sure that that insulation insulation is held up against the box and won't droop or fall or anything like that. The other thing to think about, and I think Henry figured this out the hard way, is that we found it was easier to put the insulation in where you left some room when you're putting the top of the box on so that the top of the box just has one gigantic rectangular piece of insulation that you don't have to cut to fit in. That'll make more sense as you look at it here, but you can see there's a little gap so that the insulation, when they put the outside of the box on, it'll all just fit snug together. So those are little tips that I think might help you. He also used this special type of paint. Um, I believe it's for ventilation systems, but just to cover some of the excess insulation side so that you're not breathing in some of that nasty fiberglass through your ventilation system. So any parts where the black coating, which actually covers the fiberglass, uh, wasn't showing, we painted over that to make sure that it doesn't get into the air system. We actually did throw in on the the intake air, the fresh air that's coming in, we did use a small little filter that's like a custom made filter that you can see right here that we just threw in the vent right before it enters the room. I experimented with having that in and out to see if it changed the sound at all, having too much resistance and I couldn't notice a difference. So I decided to keep it in just to catch any particles that might be coming through. Next thing I would say is the transition from the baffle boxes through your wall is something you may have some worries about. That was one of my biggest worries was trying to understand, well, how do you get through the wall? How do you make it so it doesn't touch? In the end, it's one of those things where you kind of break the rules. The baffle box opens up at the wall to a one foot by one foot opening, which I know some of you are dropping your jaw like, oh my God, that's massive. But the truth is that the soundproofing in this room actually improved because we 
ended up adding a lot of extra drywall, double layers of drywall green glue on that outside wall that wasn't there before. So my hands, my soundproofing, I believe actually improved with putting a two one foot by one foot holes in my wall. So just want to dispel any worries that you have. If you do this the way I did, you'll be just fine. So when you're punching through your wall here, here's, you can see some video of Henry actually cutting through my wall and pulling out that massive two layers of drywall with green glue. And that was a scary moment when we put massive holes in our wall, but in the end it, it worked out great. So you want to actually frame just with some pieces of wood through that wall. So you're going to create a, a, a no gaps. Obviously you don't want the air flowing into between the gaps in your your two walls if you did a double wall system. Um, so you're going to create a one by one foot entryway for the air to come into your room and then you're using the special grates that we talked about earlier, um, the Nailer Industries grates, that you can just screw those right into the wall and those will help also disperse the air evenly and quiet the air down. I think we also use some of that paint around the area um, where it enters through the wall just so it's it's smooth um, and and totally sealed up. So that's the general gist of how this all works. In the end, I was surprised it's not quite as complicated as I as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it it makes sense in theory and then you do it and you're like, oh, yeah, this is great. This works. So that was a description of how to build a baffle box. I hope it was somewhat helpful, if nothing else, from understanding how you are going to design this thing and getting a concept of how it all works together. So if, again, if you'd like to learn more about soundproofing, I have that free soundproofing workshop below. You can check it out, sign up. It's amazing. And you'll learn a lot more about soundproofing if you want to take your soundproof studio to the next level. All right. Thank you all so much for watching and for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, I will see you next week, same time every week on Monday. And thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.